What up guys, so I thought I'd make a quick video on how to get used to Maya being a 3D Max user. So I recently had to make the switch because of work to Maya from 3D Max. And you know, there's a bunch of videos online, stuff that you have to pay for that claims, you know, will help you learn Maya as a 3D Max user. But all those videos ended up just kind of being like light versions of Maya, intro to Maya light. Um, and they didn't really draw that many comparisons to 3D Max and I didn't actually find it that much of a transition. Um, 3D is 3D. It, it's it's always been the case where people, teachers would say, you know, it's the same thing. Like it's all verts, edges, polygons, and all that kind of stuff. So if you understand the gist of 3D, you're going to be fine. But there's a bunch of things that Maya just does differently. And what this video is going to be about is showing you how to break down those walls of making it more comfortable as a 3D Max user. And also drawing direct comparisons to how things that you know from Max translate into Maya in a different way. So the first thing, the most important thing, and the thing that I'm going to recommend the most is using hotkeys. Um, basically, the way to get really comfortable in Maya immediately, obviously not long term, if you want to get used to the uh, the click and drag menu that Maya uses, go for it. But if you want to get used to Maya and focus on the other aspects of Maya that are different, this is the best way to get used to it. So the first thing is we're going to go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, and Hotkey Editor. And this is like the first step, man, before you even do anything. This is what you should do. So unlike Max, this is actually super nice. It gives you kind of a keyboard layout to show you what's been keybound. And even if it is keybound, it can show you the multiple functions of that. Uh, right here is another useful thing, application command. Um, I honestly don't know where things are. So sometimes if I don't find it in this one, I'll check the runtime command uh, as well. And then you can also go by hotkey. So if I go by hotkey and I push the letter, let's say T, it'll show me everything that the letter T is associated with. So the main thing, and like probably the trickiest thing, I'm just gonna close this for a sec. The trickiest thing in Maya is that you have to right click and that's how you select your vertex, your edge and your faces and then your object, right? So, uh, you know, selecting edges like this with the mouse menu. And I don't know about you guys, but this is super hard for me. Like I felt like I was aiming, like I haven't had to aim this hard since I played McCree. Um, I was aiming like here and then missing this. Not only that, but like you go to vertex and sometimes it goes into like a sub menu and then like to right click and then click this stuff to like edit this stuff to select by holding control and shift. It was too much. I missed, uh, you know, just going quickly to 3D Max real quick. Like, let's say I make a box and I'm so used to uh, the one for vertex, two for edge and three for border and four for face that I wanted to switch that immediately. Right. Before I could even make a box, I had to switch this up. All right, so the other critical thing that you have to know inside of Maya are what the buttons that you're used to pushing in 3D Max and what they do inside of Maya instead, okay? So I'm just going to go back to object mode here. So inside of Maya, if you hit 1 through 6 or 7, all it does is it changes how the mesh looks inside the viewport. So if I hit 1, I get this. If I hit 2, I get a preview of smoothing. 3 is this, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? And 1 to go back. And there we go, I think six goes back to the, the main thing. So when you're a new user to Maya and you're used to 3D Max and you're like, oh yeah, man, I'm gonna go to my sub object and I'm gonna hit my verts and my edges, you're gonna get so messed up. It's gonna mess you up massively, okay? So we have to change these key binds. This is my, this is my setup at home. I haven't actually configured Maya like I have at work, um, but type in mask under runtime command and you're gonna see everything this, all this stuff here is basically what you have enabled in Mac. So I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff because honestly, like there's always that kind of feeling, well, oh, if I change my hotkeys um, to make it custom for myself, I won't be able to use anyone else's Maya. How often is that really gonna happen, right? Customize it to the way and for the tools that you use on a regular basis. And don't worry about all the extra stuff that Maya can do. Like focus on the things that modeling is good at or you know whatever you're focusing on. So don't be afraid to change these hotkeys at all. And you can always reset them, right? All right, yeah, let's do it. So vertex, we're gonna make what we know. We're gonna just make that one. Edge, we're gonna make that two. Face, you can do four, which is default. I'm gonna use three, because that's just what I'm comfortable with now. So that's half the battle, all right? So that's the one, two, three taken care of. The next thing that we wanna change is we actually don't wanna lose the preview buttons that Maya has in by default. Why would you wanna take that function away completely from the program? So we're gonna remap those. So the way to look for that is to Look for display. And down here, this is everything that we took away and we want to put back into the program. So I'm going to make this 
I'm gonna use my F keys because I never use those for anything. F1, F2, F3. And just above, you'll get these four, five, and six. I'm gonna actually leave these as is. Display wireframe is the one that you really want though. And this is gonna be our Alt X. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, just make sure you confirm if it's overriding a change, just accept it, it's gonna be fine. So Alt X is gonna be like our X-ray mode that we have in 3D Max. And then the last of the really important hotkeys we wanna set up is object. So we wanna to go to app. This key right here, object component is super important. I'm gonna actually make this tilde, the tilde key, whatever it's called, before beside the, the number one. And that's gonna be kind of like your exit sub object level that lets you pick other objects. It just makes it really easy to select things. All right, the third and final pro tip I can give you to make Maya feel so much more like Max is how we get to the different viewport layouts. So on the left-hand side here, we have some clickable buttons to change the configuration of the viewports. But by default, Maya switches it by holding space or by pushing space quickly. Okay, so you can space bar in and out of various perspective windows. In Max, though, we use Alt W, so this is going to be a really important hotkey to set up. And what you need to look for is Hotbox. Okay, so right here, Alt W, show Hotbox, and Alt W also to hide Hotbox. I'm just going to save that. And now, now we're Gucci. Let's test this out. One for Vertex, two for Edge, three for Face. Okay, and the tilde key for objects. So that's perfect. That's exactly, we've now officially set up Maya like Max. We don't have to use the selection menu here, the marking menu. And then let's test the F keys. So F1, F2, F3, we still have that function. And then six, seven, eight, right? So that's a lot more comfortable just like that, making those small changes. So now we've got some tools that we're used to having in Max. And again, everyone's hotkeys in Max can be different, but I'm just gonna point out some really important ones that you're gonna to wanna to know. The first thing, as soon as I got on the job, the first thing I want to know is how do you isolate objects? All right, so fortunately this one comes free. Uh, Maya actually has a really good hotkey for isolating objects. It's control one. So you can't tell right now, it's not that easy to tell, but I'm actually isolated right now, down here, isolate perspective, and then control one to get back out of perspective, or to get back out of isolate. So control one's a really good hotkey for isolating. In fact, if I had a hotkey in max, it would probably be a control one now. All right, so let's go back to the hotkey editor. And there's just a bunch of tools that you're gonna want to know for modeling sake. So target weld is a really important one. I'm gonna set that to T. Cut, you're gonna want the multi-cut tool. I'm gonna make that C. This is a really important one. Insert edge loop, you're gonna want this one. I'm gonna make this one, I'm gonna make this one shift F for now. And right, now I'm gonna set a hotkey for extrude. This is super important. So there's a bunch of them, um, but the one that you want is extrude under edit mesh. I'm gonna make that control E. Now you don't actually need to make a hotkey for inset inside of Maya because the extrude tool will just let you do insets as well. It's the same thing. So just use the extrude tool for inset. All right, so I think we're almost done here, guys. Um, so Shift F, get some edge loops in there. Alt X, let's go into vert mode, hit T, target weld. Welding is really cool inside of Maya, actually. I'm using six, that's a default key. So I'm going, I'm hitting Alt X to go what I would call like X-ray mode. And then I'm hitting six uh, which is going to bring it back to what it uh, should look like. So one display mode that you're going to want inside of Maya, and this is uh, really useful, is to go to display, polygons, and backface culling. And I'd like to have keep wire, yeah. And this is going to help a lot. So let's go into face mode and delete. And so now we can see that these are backfacing polygons, okay? And then just in terms of like how Maya operates, um, one more thing. So I'm gonna go into object mode here and I'm gonna draw another square. And let's, uh, sorry, a cube, we're doing 3D. And then another, right? So let's just uh, let's test this out, control one to isolate. Okay. So one thing I do wanna mention is that, yeah, I 
set up hotkeys to get into sub object in a similar fashion to how you do it in 3D Max. But it's important to know that there's a lot of functionality in the marking menu that you do and you will need eventually. Uh, this is just to get you started. So holding shift allows you to go into kind of the, the modeling uh, and editing tools and then holding control and right click, sorry, is uh, will take you to selection. So, so let's say I'm looking at this object and I go into edge and I select this edge. If I hold control and I right click, it allows me to convert that selection to verts. Okay. And then if I hold uh, right click and shift, sorry, shift and right click, I can do things like merge and multi-cut. All right. So I'm going to, I have a keybind for that now. So C for my keybind. All right. So I can just cut my way around the world. Okay. And I hit Q to just go back to marking selection. So if you're looking to combine objects inside of Maya, you're going to pick all your objects by holding shift. And while you're holding shift, right click. And then down here at the bottom is combine. Okay, so now this is all one object. And if you want to separate that again, you just shift, right, right click and go to separate. I'm going to tell you guys one last thing. Um, so I was inside of, I was sculpting inside of ZBrush and I wanted to import, export, whatever. And I'm going to show you something really quick. Cause this drove me crazy. Cause I went to, I picked my objects and I went to file export and I couldn't export as an OBJ. And that drove me absolutely mad. So I'm going to give you one more pro tip. So to go to ensure that you're able to export as an OBJ, you go to windows settings and preferences and plugin manager. And inside this plugin manager, you will find something called OBJ exporter. Sorry, OBJ export. You want to make sure that it's loaded and you want to make sure it's auto loaded so that every time you boot Maya, it's up. I don't know why, but for some ungodly reason, this thing was not activated on my first day. And I thought I was just, you know, the stupidest person in the world for not being able to export an OBJ out of a 3D program. So I think I've set you up with pretty much everything you need to know to get a little bit of a head start inside of Maya if you've never used Maya before. Um, recently, I just started a job where I literally had no idea. I've never really used Maya before. And I found that hotkeys was the way to at least get me started um, so I could focus on all the other things, all the other tools that Maya has that Max probably has in some shape or form, but it's not something that we're really used to. Um, I'll probably make another video as I get more familiar with Maya to help you guys out because I know what it's like. Like I, I totally understand that it's not that I've ever been afraid of Maya or whatever, but I was trained on Max and it's becoming increasingly more common that studios are looking for people with Maya experience. Um, it's definitely a good thing to learn. So hopefully you guys thought that was somewhat useful. Um, I'll probably make a few more videos, like I said, and uh, good luck.